Harry and the Anzac Poppy by John Lockyer. Harry and the Anzac Poppy by John Lockyer. The letters Harry finds in his great grandma Kate's bedroom describe a world Harry's only read about in books. Written by Grandma Kate's father from the Western Front during the First World War, they not only describe what it is like to be a Kiwi soldier in the trenches, but also share the feelings of loneliness and fear experienced by all the soldiers. As the story evolves through reading these precious letters, Harry not only learns the significance of Little Poppy worn on Anzac Day, but also discovers the answer to a family secret. In 1914, our small country of just over one million people sent 100,444 soldiers and nurses overseas to war. Six out of every ten who sailed became a casualty. 18,166 deaths and 41,317 wounded. Many of our dead have no known graves. When our soldiers looked out from the trenches during the fighting, they saw red poppies growing, in the wa- growing wild in the fields, and they imagined each poppy represented a dead soldier. Each year on Anzac Day, 25th of April, we wear poppies to remember those that die. Chris Pugsley, military historian. Harry knocked, waited a moment, then went into Great Grandma Kate's bedroom. She was resting in her chair, but looked up and smiled when she saw who it was. Hello, Harry, boy, she said. Come on in. Grinning, Harry slid her slippers under the bed, then folded her scarf and put it in a drawer. Helping great-grandma Kate tidy up was his job. He did it every night before he went to bed. A small wooden box was on the floor beside the chair. Harry picked it up. What's this, grandma? Grandma Kate ran her fingers over the scratch lid. Do you know anything about World War I? she asked. Harry shook his head. Well, my father, your great-great-granddad was in that war. She opened the box. And these are the pictures and letters he sent me while he was away. A photograph clipped from a newspaper was on top. It was black and white and faded. Grandma Kate picked it up. These are some of the men in his battalion. They were on parade at the wars just before they sailed for Europe. My mother cut it out of the newspaper shortly after my father's ship had sailed. Not long afterwards a letter came describing what had happened the day they left. My dearest Kate, the march through Wellington was wonderful. There were bands playing and streets were packed with people. They waved and cheered. Little children ran after us, handing out lollies and fruit. It was a grand send-off. We are three days out at sea and still there is great excitement on board. The big adventure has begun. Your loving father. Grandma Kate tucked the photograph back in the box. The rest of the letters were written after he arrived in Europe. Harry pulled a cushion up beside the chair. Read me one, please, Grandma, he said. Grandma Kate unfolded a sheet of yellow paper. The well-worn edges were crinkled and smudged. I was about your age at the time this letter was written in November 1917. My dearest Kate, well, here I am in France at last. Clear days but cold nights. I am writing this sitting on my nest, a bed of straw in an old barn, and pressing on my mess tin. We've been marching for three days, getting closer to the front line. I can hear the moan of the guns, and every now and then the sky lights up with flashes as shells are fired. I'll be all right, though. Not a bit afraid. It's a great life in the trenches, I'm sure. Everyone thinks the war will not last a great time. I hope so. I'm longing to to be back with you all. The food here is vile. Always stew. You help make make me one of those cakes with lots of currants in it, and I'll give you both a great big kiss when I get back. I must go now. I'm on guard duty. Got to put everything on. Overcoat, life belt, bandoliers and water bottle makes a man feel like a pack horse. Write to you soon, your loving father. It sounds exciting, Harry said. Grandma nodded. Many men thought so too, but they soon changed their minds after they got to the Western Front. What's that? Harry asked, passing her another letter. Grandma Kate unfolded the pages. The line of trenches closest to the enemy was called the Western Front. The front line was where many men lost their lives. December 6, 1917. My dearest Kate, cold nights, cold days and cold nights. Just got a few minutes to myself. I've been in the front line. It's a scary place. Not at all what I thought. We were close to some big guns, going off all the time. You can hardly hear yourself talk. We go up for eight days at a time, and all we do is dig, clearing out trenches that have been shelled or digging new ones. Makes a man feel like a rat. We wash and shave in muddy water and sleep standing up. It's a rough tough life. When we're not in the line, we're on the move. 
always marching, never long in one place. The villages are knocked about some, tumble down buildings, shell holes in the walls. The few women and children that are about are dirty and hungry, but always have things to sell. Bought you something pretty for Christmas. I put a Christmas stocking up in my dugout, five feet below the ground. The stocking had a hole in it, so I mended it. What a trick! It took me ten minutes to thread the needle. When that was done, I didn't know where to start. Anyway, I got it fixed and only pricked my thumb twice. I would give you all I own to be back here, home on Christmas Day. Let's hope I won't be here much longer. Got to go now. Time for dinner. Lousy stew again. Write to you soon. Your loving father. What did you get for Christmas? Harry asked. Grandma thought for a moment. I'm not sure, she said, but I do remember the mail was very slow. It came by a ship, sometimes taking six weeks. How often did he write? asked Harry. Grandma Kate smiled. Every month, she sighed. He wrote to me every month. Shuffling the letters inside the box, Grandma said, We'll have just one more, and then it's bedtime. January 29, 1918. My dearest Kate, rotten weather. Rain, 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 and mud galore. Up to your knees in it. Shifted back from the, f from the front line for a few days' rest, which I needed badly. The guns boom all day and all night, but I don't take too much notice now. I'm eating a lump of homemade toffee. A digger gave it to me. It tastes good, I can tell you. Haven't had any mail or food parcels for weeks. Must be a hold-up somewhere. How was Christmas? Did you like the lace I got you? Oh, how I wish this war was over. Miss you all terribly. I was in the line on Christmas Day. Rained all day and all night. Got wet through and covered with mud. Cold as stone. Lots of fireworks, though. Shells going off all around. Flames and flares. Makes a man keep his nut down. Food comes up through the front in sandbags. It's always full of grit, fluff and string. Guess what I had for dinner? It was bully beef stew. Bully beef stew for Christmas dinner. Boy, did I curse. This soldier makes a man rough around the edges. He will have to sandpaper me down when I get back. Got to go now. Hope everyone at home is well. Write to you soon, your loving father. Did you miss your dad when he was away? Harry asked. Grandma Kate placed the letter back in the box. Oh yes, she said but I think he missed us more. When he wrote to my mother, he always finished with the same words. I wish I could turn into this letter and come back home to you. We wished he could too. The next night after tidying up, Harry got the wooden box off the shelf. Why didn't great-grandma, great-grandad write more about the fighting, he asked. Grandma Kate opened the box. He wasn't allowed to. None of the men were. All their letters were read by an officer. Information about where they were or what they were doing was crossed out just in case the enemy got hold of the mail. She opened the next letter. This was written in March 1918. My dearest Kate, crook weather, showery rain and freezing cold. Back in the trenches again, four days at a time. It was quiet until last night when things really heated up. Shells bursting everywhere. No wounded though. It amazes me how the shells land all around you and never touch you. When I got back to the rest camp, there was a parcel for me. Three litres and a huge cake from home. How I jumped for joy. Had some cake right away. Good, splendid, bon, bosca. Made me smack my lips. Supper tonight will be grand. I found your photo in the first letter. If anything made me wish I was home, it was when I saw that photo. You look a treat. And such a pretty dress. Is that the lace I bought you on the collar? I showed the photo all around. Everyone says you look just like me. They say you are good looking, so I must be too. Ha! Got to go now, back to my rabbit hole. rabbit hole. There's a plane buzzing overhead. It might drop some eggs. Write to you soon, your loving father. Eggs? Harry said. Shells, said Grandma Kate. And they didn't just drop on the front line. The men had to be on the lookout wherever they were. But why do they call them eggs? asked Harry. It was just a saying, Grandma said. Many things were made up during the war. Walking wounded, marching orders, single file of ones we still use. Harry got another letter from the box. Grandma Kate opened it. She read the first few lines and smiled to herself. What does it say? Harry asked. April 12, 1918. My dearest Kate. Cold nights, lovely sunny days. The mud is drying up at last. Just fancy it's your birthday on Thursday. Eight years old. I hope you have a lovely happy day. I pray I'll be back all before the next one. All that is say how wonderful well you are doing at school and how helpful you are at home. I am so proud of you. It's over a year since I last saw you. Hard to believe. 
have just returned from the trenches for a few days rest at a camp back from the lines, living in the above the ground at last. My home is a bit of canvas slung over a wire between two trees. You would laugh if you could see me, cramped up like a cave crayfish but heaps better than a dugout. I am writing this lying on the grass with my shirt off. The sky is clear. The sun is warm and the wheat fields are spotted with bright red poppies. You would not think there was a war on if it were not for the clatter of guns. The non-stop shelling gets to you after a while. When is it going to end? I look at my pants. You should see them. I haven't had them off in three months. Hard to say what they're made of. Mud, grease, paint, food, oil. Only time they get a wash is when it rains. They have to be falling off you before you get a new pair. This war is short on everything, everything but time. Curse the whole rotten business. Got to go now. Feeling very tired. Need to sleep. Write to you soon, your loving father. Was the, shell, the noise of the shells really terrible? Harry asked. It was deafening, said Grandma Kate. It wrecked some men's nerves so badly they couldn't stay at the front. The shell shock men were sent to hospital. Harry frowned. No one's ever talked about great great granddad. He didn't get shell shock, did he? Grandma Kate shook her head quickly. No. Now, how many letters left? Harry counted four. There's time for two more, said Grandma Kate. We'll leave the others until tomorrow. Harry nodded and handed her the next one. May 24th, 1918. My dearest Kate, warm and sunny, back in the trenches. I hope you had a good birthday. I wished you many happy returns in my mind. It was the best I could do. We have shifted to fresh fields, very heavy bombardments, some of the heaviest yet, and most of the shells are gas or shrapnel. I'm not ashamed to tell you, Kate. It put, puts the wind up a man. I had a lovely dream the other night. I dreamed I was back home sitting on the veranda talking to you. I was holding your hand and you were telling me how much you missed me. Suddenly, I woke up and found I was lying in a trench with rats all around me and a stone sticking into my back. I could have cried, but thought it was no use. Here's a trick. Every night we, we men take turns at giving a menu for what we would like to have for dinner. My favourite is steak and onions, then apple pie and cream. Delicious. It's just a game, of course, but boy does it make us hungry. No prices for guessing for what we really had for dinner. Got to go now, in training for a new stunt. Write to you soon, your loving father. Grandma Kate closed her eyes and sighed. Harry took the letter, folded it and placed another one in her hands. He waited for her, her to open her eyes and then asked, What shrapnel? Grandma Kate sighed again. Hot bits of flying metal. Lots of men were wounded by it, but far more were made sick or blinded by gas. Often when a shell exploded, there wasn't time to put on the gas mask before the thick mist blew into the trenches. She rustled the notepaper. There were many, many dangers. January 30, 1918. June 30, 1918. My dearest Kate, stinking hot days and nights. I am back in the firing line once more, sitting in a trench waiting for darkness. There are diggers all around me. They are quiet, all nervous like me. At night we crawl over the sandbags into no man's land. Then we scramble in and out of the shell holes, laying barbed wire across the battlefield. We go quickly, we go quietly. Whenever an egg whistles over, we dive into holes, sometimes on top of the very wire we've just laid. We curl up and pray we won't be hit or buried alive. Terrifying times. It's almost more than a man can stand. And this new stunt has really knocked me about. I'm exhausted. The wire is a curse. It rips, it slashes, it tears. When I got back to our trenches this morning, I was cut from head to toe. My pants and my tunic were ripped to ribbons. We all feel that this terrible war must end soon, even if we are beaten. So many wasted lives. It's just about time to go over the top again. A great big hug for you. Write to you soon, your loving father. Grandma Kate handed the letter to Harry. The big adventure had turned into a nightmare, she said. No one ever thought so many men would be killed. How many did die, Harry asked. Grandma Kate closed her eyes. More than 100,000 New Zealanders went to the war and almost 20,000 never returned. Did they bring the bodies home? No. They were buried in war cemeteries all over Europe and in their hometowns the names were put on special memorials. Is there a memorial in this town, Harry asked. Grandma Kate nodded. It's in the park, she said. Now off you go to bed. When Harry looked back as, as he gently closed the door, Grandma Kate, he saw Grandma Kate staring at a small white card she'd picked out of the box. 
Later that night, Harry got out of bed. Across the hallway, he could see the light leaking through the crack under Grandma Kate's door. He pushed the door open. Grandma Kate was sitting up in bed. She smiled at him. Can't sleep either, she asked. Harry rubbed his eyes. I kept thinking about the war and great-great-granddad. Grandma patted the bed. Harry climbed up beside her. I want to know what happened, he whispered. Grandma Kate was still. Harry squeezed her hand. Read the last letters to me. Please, Grandma. Grandma Kate let out a long, wheezy breath. Pass me the box of my glasses. They're on the table beside you. August 18, 1918. My dearest Kate. Well, girl, they landed me one, but I'm all right. I have a nasty chest wound. My arm's not too good and my legs are fractured, but the nurses look after me pretty well. How did it happen? It was a quiet night. No shells. I've been over the top six times spreading the cruel barbed wire. Finished my stunt and dropped back to our camp. Just had a cup of tea and whiz, bang, one got me. Just found myself on the ground with pain in my legs. Finished my war day, so the doctor tells me. Can't say I'm not pleased. Can't wait to get better. Can't wait to get home. Oh, how I pine for you all. Remember the red poppies I wrote to you about? They grew wild for weeks. Thousands of them all over the battlefield. A grand display. Well, I picked one. I've dried it and pressed it. I'm keeping it for you, Kate. I'm sure it's a sign of new hope. I want to write more. My arms won't let me. Got to rest. Sorry about the wobbly writing. Heaps of love and kisses, your loving father. Harry sat up. So what happened next? He did come back all right, didn't he? Grandma picked up the last letter in the box. Her fingers traced the creases in the paper as if she as if it had been read many times. Would you like me to read it? she asked, showing him the letter. Harry nodded. And she began reading the small white card. As she began reading, a small white card fell from the folds of the letter onto the bed. October 14, 1918. Dear Kate, Your father and I had been chums since we left Wellington. I was with him when he was wounded. A few weeks before this he gave me a tin and said if anything ever happened to him I was to send it to you. It's mostly bits and pieces he collected on his travels for your mother, but he did say that the little red poppy was especially for you. When this shell exploded he got a hit by a shrapnel. While the other boys bandaged him I went for a stretcher bearer's. On the way to the dressing station he was in good spirits. I did not think he was too badly hit. That was the last I saw of him. It was some time later that I heard he had died. I tell you I was shocked. Harold, or Harry, as he called your father, was a good mate. In losing poor Harry I lost the best friend I had in France and I'll miss him terribly. I hope this letter finds you and your mother both safe and well. Yours sincerely, Bert Gray. But he couldn't have died, Harry said. He was all right. He said so in his letter. He had terrible wounds. He got an infection, Grandma explained. Harry picked up the card. A poppy painted with clear varnish had been fixed to one side. Harry's chin trembled. Was I named after great-great-granddad, he asked. Grandma Kate nodded. Harry blinked away a tear. I never knew that, he sighed. The memorial in the park, is his name on it? Grandma Kate nodded again. Would you take me to see it? Grandma Kate kept her hand around Harry so they were both holding the puppy. You'll go tomorrow, she said. First thing. The morning was cold and misty. The park was empty. Harry and Grandma Kate stood in front of the memorial, a tall grey stone pillar. Harry ran, reached up and ran his fingers over the carved letters of his granddad's name. Grandma Kate read the words above the names. These men then gave their lives so that others might live in freedom. Let those that come after see to it that their names be not forgotten. Harry stepped back and touched the little red poppy that was pinned to his jacket. I won't forget, Grandma. I will never forget.